Logan Robinson's here, everyone. We're breaking down the offense and the defense. We do this every spring. We do it every summer going into the season. So we always appreciate Logan stopping by one of our originals here, the voice of college football. All right. Wide receiver, that tandem of Keon Coleman and Johnny Wilson was special. Florida State's known going back to the Bobby Bowden days and when he first built this into a dynasty for speed and elite wide receivers. And then they hit about a 10-year period I'm not going to say that they didn't have wide receiver talent because they did, but not at the level uh, outside of maybe one or two guys. Uh, mm -hmm. And then they put that tandem together uh, as two transfer portal additions. And of course, that's something Mike Norvell has done as well as anybody in the country. But those two guys move on. And so the, the exciting names are a guy that we, I don't know how many shows we spent with you talking about yeah. Destin Hill. And it looks like he's going to be playing yeah. out of the slot. He caught a few passes last year. and But everybody's excited, of course, about high Keaton Williams. And so uh, I'll let you take away the uh, running back or the wide receiver room for us. Yeah, high high Keem has probably been one of the most talked about players going into this spring camp. And he's deserved it just off of some things that we've been hearing, some rumblings ever since uh, the latter half of last season. You know, we saw him shine a little bit there in his touchdown and saw, whoa, where'd that speed come from? Because at the beginning of this time last year, he came in out of shape, bigger, bigger guy, just things weren't, things were in the mold of what, you know, he wanted to be body wise and was slacking a little bit just with the, with the, with his body. He was a true freshman coming in and coach storms had to do a lot of, a lot of work with them. And now, you know, it, it's fully worked out to where, you know, high team, just looking at some of the photos of him and strength and conditioning and, and the weight room, he's done a really good job with his body. And uh, I thought he really dialed in in the latter half of last season. And it's only extended into beast mode going into this spring camp. And they're expecting a lot from Hakeem Williams. It's hard definitely to jump into that roti rotation like it was last year. If, if Hakeem Williams was playing and starting and getting as many plays as last year, then something was going on with the group that was in front of him. And you're not going to pass up Johnny Wilson or Keon Coleman, Ken Tron there as well, Ja'Kai Douglas. Like It's just – I, you don't want a true freshman just jumping in there like that as it's hard as a true freshman at the wide receiver position as a whole in the college level to do so. So this allowed Hakeem to sit back, learn, also get developed as well. And now it's his time to shine, like shine, but there's still some more work to be done. But Hakeem ones, there's a lot to like, and I'm interested to see with his growth, how much that goes there alongside with Destin Hill, who, uh, you know, well, like you said, we talked about him on the show. It was everybody's questions, a weekly update on Destin Hill. Where is he? Where's the unicorn? Well, he's here. He's been one of the most uh, probably fan favorites since the offseason, just been all over social media and been hyping up his teammates and all these uh, weightlifting uh, workouts. He, to me, is might be the most just naturally gifted, talented wide receiver in the room, just the way that he can be a playmaker. He might be the, he might be one of the biggest playmakers on this team. It's just kind of got hindered last season. Also a true freshman. It's hard to see the field of the collegiate level at the wide receiver room. Um, and definitely what the amount of talent that we're about to see in the NFL draft and that wide receiver, wide receiver room goes. So, uh, you know, Destin Hill, those two cats, it's going to be super fun to see them in year two. They're going to be utilized a lot. Mike Norvell and the scheme that they're going to run behind him with, uh, with Ron Dugans. Shout out to the Donk. Love him. Uh, I think what they've been able to do to revamp that room is huge, and that's got to continue going into the next couple of seasons. And, you know, just looking at this room, you're going to have these guys for a couple more seasons as well. We didn't even get to a guy that's listed right now on the spring depth chart as a starter in Kentron Portier. Yep. And, uh, you mentioned Ja'Kai Douglas as well. Do you think they're going to get passed by or are there going to be plenty of targets for those guys? I think there will be plenty of targets. The biggest thing for Kentron since his early career, not really last year as much sort of was, but healthy, staying healthy. That's the same thing for Darion Williamson as well. Uh, you know, ju just staying healthy is the most pivotal thing for them because for them both because they have the most experience do span is also in this conversation of just more getting down the playbook than anything understanding where you need to be route running wise that's something that i know is something that has to be worked on with him as a player jakai douglas you know extremely good deep threat for florida state and interested to see to his 
big jump in the spring, added on another 10 pounds there. So interesting to see if he can carry on that weight with his speed. But, you know, you've got Malik Benson too, this Alabama transfer wide receiver. Number used to be number one Juco committed to Alabama, was there last year, and then you know, got a whole staff change over there with Nick Saban calling retirement. And he gives a shot and coming down here to to Ron Dugan's and Mike Ravel's offense. I, 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 I wouldn't be shocked if we see Malik Benson starting pretty early on for Florida State in this wide receiver room. And I wouldn't be crazy shocked to see him be a starter in uh, week one in Ireland, which might be a maybe I don't think it's really a hot take at this point. You know, we've only been through a couple little scenes here of camp, but Malik Benson, I've heard, has been very, very, very impressive and then just one more or two more guys this this play this thing is loaded mark it's just stupid loaded but two names to keep an eye on here vondravius jacobs and camden fryer uh camden fryer finally got us a white wide receiver that's got some speed got some strength and is really good in the slot and can be really shifty so finally got one of those and clemson has had a few of those in the past shout out hunter renfro and all those guys but florida state finally got him one of those legacy guy with camden fryer his dad playing for Florida State, but I, I I absolutely love that kid. I don't know how much playing time he'll get this upcoming season, but man, FSU fans are going to salivate about that player. And then Vondravius Jacobs, he'll go for any ball, any day. Doesn't matter which DB, which safety, whoever's crashing down on him, come to lay a hit. This kid risks it all for the ball. And you know, Vondravius Jacobs has some crazy hands, and I'd like to see him now fully healthy in the spring get back to what we what he showed us this last year hopefully put on a, a little bit of size that's this room's just loaded you you've got you've got veterans in here that understand the system you've got newcomers like a Malik Benson uh you know Jalen Lucas will you know go on the slot sometimes too and what they want to do with scheme wise uh and a newcomer like Camden Fryer but you know there there's there's some year two guys with Von Dravius Jacobs who lit up one of the top wide receivers the top wide receiver in Florida and his time with Hakeem Williams and Destin Hill DJ, DJ, there's a one there. That's a reason probably why, you know, DJ wanted to come to Florida State. You should be licking your chops at what you have at the wide receiver rim. It is impressive. Uh, Benson caught 13 balls for the Tide last year, 162 yards and a touchdown. And Jacobs got in the field enough for Florida State for three catches, 60 yards last year. We're talking up FSU football on both sides of the ball with Logan Robinson, Noel Game Day.